Okay, this uh, good evening or good morning or you know good day to you whenever whenever you're watching this uh, session. This is for week nine's lecture and it's really a summary, a breakdown of what the topics we'll be covering. So this week's lecture is for week nine. It's on quality management practices in food and beverage operations. You will be actually watching this on YouTube, um, and I'm go going to go through briefly um, what's um, what this uh, topic is all about so it's on quality management practices and food and beverage and you can relate this to your your i'll always be going back to your um your final project and also relate this to the questions in your tutorial so please sign up for your tutorials which is um on thursdays i'm um, sorry yeah uh, fridays so um this week we look at some of the objectives and uh Sound Objective talks about the importance of quality in food and beverage operations, and it's also very important. Uh, we need very good quality controls um, to ensure that our um, services are efficient, our um, the cleanliness and the preparation of the food in the kitchen to the delivery of the food um, in the evening. Um, we also look at uh, between quality and return customers. Retention of the customers is also very important and trying to establish a, um, a customer base, a loyal customer, that's very important because you want returnees all the time to your restaurants because that provides great revenue and also creates a good customer, uh, um, uh, good uh, employer, employee, you know, there has a good connection between the customer and the employees or, or the establishment or their brand name, trying to establish their brand name or their um, their position in the market. We'll also look at in total the, the operations. So we'll talk about serve call, we'll talk about total quality management, and then we'll also look at how to evaluate different approaches to quality management because, you know, it's quite uh, food and beverage operations and countries differ from place to place because of many factors of the way things operate, the corporate culture, um, the way work is done, um, uh, also how you know, um, you know the like say for Fiji tourism is quite different from uh, different islands in the Pacific. So the approach to quality would vary uh, a, a little from different countries to countries. So what is quality? Sometimes we look at quality. Sometimes when you go out and you buy, a lot of uh, customers relate quality to price, but not necessarily. So when they see a higher price, and you ask them is that a good quality and people say yeah it's a good product because it's a really good price but it's not really that okay um, so quality uh, looks at British standards definitions which is total totality of features and characteristics of a product or service that bear on its ability to satisfy a, a stated or implied need okay so what it basically is trying to explain to you is that the characteristics of the product the features uh, meets the actual need like your expectation, all right? So you're paying a price for that particular. So when you see it was quality service, which means that your expectation of the way the food server um, served you, she was very polite, friendly, she was efficient. Uh, she came down, she took your order very well and repeated your order and your meal was brought in within the next 10 to 15 minutes. So we call that quality service as compared to when you use a tangible product, okay? Um, your expectation of that particular product when you consume it or when you use it. Um, it also talks about quality can exist at any level of service as long as expectations are met. And see, I just gave you the example. I gave the example of the service, uh, food service, and also when you have, buy a tangible product, what's your expectation? And also the environment plays a, a, a important role, basically meaning you know, the ambience contributes to the... Um, to the to the the service delivery and also contributes to the experience so that's really important uh, tangible elements are good use are goods used to serve the food so the style the nature of the plates you know uh, glassware cutlery so it basically means that if you have proper equipment proper utensils you can carry out the service it just enhances the quality of the service so it's really important so you don't have proper utensils or augmented service to deliver the product, then it, you don't provide the best quality service. 
Intangible elements is what I just gave you um, earlier, the example. It includes overall atmosphere, you know, the ambience, establishing the appropriate deco, lighting, the right feeling, how you welcome the customer is also important. They help to provide the feeling of comfort and being ease at home. All right. Make, you know how you t tell people when they come home and say, please make yourself feel welcome. All right. That's basically one of the, one of the, um, you know, things that a lot of uh, major D's or people who welcome guests into their, into the hotel. Okay, so we can see, uh, we can say that this is where you plate service. You look at the garnish, um, it basically looks like an entree. Okay, we have, uh, you can see those beans are, looks very crisp and fresh, and it's probably um, sauteed or it would probably be um, blanched. Okay, and look at the way the presentation is done on the plate and, and, the, and it's garnished, okay, with the sauces, etc. It's very, uh, it looks very attractive because the color is being used by the chef and it also, this, this contributes to the uh, quality experience when a guest dines out. Okay. Next, we have the size and scope of food and beverage operation. To determine quality, you have to look at the size of your restaurant and the scope of food and beverage service. So one of the things that we look at here is number one is the customer. All right, the customers are more demanding of everything they buy, no longer intimidated about complaining. All right, so they're not meaning that you know um, customer preferences are very diverse. Um, you know, some people want mayonnaise, uh, some people want it well done, you know, a beef well done or steak. Uh, some people, um, you know, they don't like the taste of a certain ingredient, so they don't want, some have dietary requirements, which means no salt. All right, so that's basically, so you've got to serve customers ensuring that you meet their needs and their special requirements or special requests. Number two, sophisticated and soft technologies allow managers to offer many possible additional and convenient service. That's true because you know, charges can vary depending on how you want your food served. Um, sophisticated would basically be, which you learned in TS 108 and 109, in terms of the point of sale system, you know, um, and Fidelio. It makes work more faster, easier, and if uh, guests want uh, addition of something, you can actually put that onto the, the cost can also be added to the bill. Uh, number three talks about quality is seen as, a prov as providing an edge or competitive advantage, and that's very true especially with a lot of um, uh, hotels, you know, with similar hotels selling the same products. Like if you go to Daikoku in um, Suva, and then you go to the Korean restaurant in Southern Cross, like what are the um, quality standards? You know, although there are different types of cuisine, you know, the quality service is seen as the, 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 the way the food is laid out, how the food and beverage server uh, serves you, how efficient they are, the cleanliness, the ambience, all that. It also, pro it, it, it is quality, it determines the quality standard, you know. So you can say um, maybe um, Grand Pacific has more quality standards than Holiday Inn or Tanoa. So depending on how the, the delivery service is also very important. Now we look at the benefits. There's so many benefits and not limited to what's, what is here. Um, profit is also one of the major benefits, the single most important factor affecting a business unit's performance. That's true. Everything boils down, you know, we're talking about a restaurant, but for, um, let's look at a non-profit organization. What would be the benefits of quality? It would be the the, the service delivery or the uh, or the satisfaction, okay? The guest or customer satisfaction or retention of their customers. But from our, st uh, from our perspective, because we're in hospitality, one of the benefits of quality is profit maximization. You get returnees like we talked about in the beginning. Um, it also provides leverage on the price value relationship. It does because people say that you buy, you know, the, you know, a lot of people, you hear people say, I don't mind the price I'm paying. Or when you eat a meal, you said that was value for money. You see a lot of people. So when they consume or use a service, they will say that was value for money. And that was quality. You know, it was a quality standard that you use their service. It also will result in business growth, very important, yes, 
right? Uh, because um, you know, profit maximization, um, improvement on revenue will provide business growth for the organization doing their financial analysis and profit loss statements. It will result in economies of scale and superior profit margin. So very good profit margins, all right, and provide if it's an international chain, it will contribute to economies of scale. Um, and lastly, it will lead to loyal customers. And I, I said that in the beginning, because you're retaining customers um, and you're creating new customer base. And it results in operational efficiencies without increasing costs. All right. So that's a, those are very important points. Now let's look at qual managing quality in service industries, like in our industries. Quality needs to be managed every time and needs to be consistent. So one of the things that you need to understand is because our services are intangible, all right? Intangibility because it's the comfort feeling at your home, secure friendliness. You need to create that atmosphere, that ambience. Heterogeneity because we don't have homogeneous. Um, it's not homogeneous um, standards of pro uh, that we provide services. We need to be consistent. Okay, so it's hard to guarantee. Remember, I talked about that in 108 to ensure that day-to-day -day service standards will be met. So you need to train your staff every time. So you see Philippine, um, sorry, um, Singapore Airlines, they they boast um, quality service because they have the same type of frame of flight attendants and they, they've been ranked number one for a couple of years between them and British Airways and Qatar Airlines and the Emirates, all right, because they thrive on on training and development and service delivery. Simultaneous, simultaneity, production and consumption, cooking and serving at the table side. So basically mean uh, flambe or where, this is very uh, common to is inseparability where production and consumption happens at the same place. Um, so we're actually, you know, we go, um, we're actually going over what you already know. Um, you know, just, um, just going over perishability, inseparability, etc. So you know what perishability means? Services cannot be stored, or restaurant seat cannot be saved. So the revenue is lost if you're not, if you haven't sold uh, seats on a plane, etc. And then the last talks about cost structure. All right. Most businesses need to be um, need a substantial investment in premises and plant and associated fixed cost. Variable costs are low generally baked even volume will be quite high all right so it basically means that businesses need to put um a substantial which means that they for them to to provide a, a good profit or to to have good output in the long run like make me the next three years they need to invest heavily on um on plant on fixed costs you know uh, machine you know material because they want to provide quality. So not just training is, is important, but also materials and assets are also very important. And let's look at this picture. Obviously, you can see the quality service in a Korean restaurant or maybe a Japanese restaurant where you see the um, the food service smiling at the at the guests, trying to make them feel welcome. Um, you can see the tables are very clean and the and the way the, the food is served, probably very hot. Um, uh, the utensils used, and, and she's explaining about the, the actual meal. Yeah, she's talking about the actual meal. Um, so further, talking about, we further, you know, there's more, um, uh, let me say, there's more, um, points in management quality uh, quality service, but we'll just talk about the important ones. Um, quality service also depends on unpredictability of demand, okay? So uh, the time period, okay, what time? Is it, is it what's the season? Uh, is it a busy, busy period, the a.m. shift or p.m. shift or midnight shift? Um, the type of customer, okay, because we get varied type of customer. Remember, customer preferences vary. Uh, some customers are very selective. I'm not saying choosy or fussy. Um, so when you get those type of customers, you know, it's a challenge for a food and beverage manager. Um, the menu items also. Uh, some items are high in demand. Some are not so high in demand. All right. So 
this varies from organizations to organization. It also varies with the type of customers and the time period. Um, short cycle of production, leaving, li leaving little time for correction or errors. So example, buy fresh veggies, prep and serve for lunch. All right, so that, um, um, and you know, we would like to say that at this point in time, because of the coronavirus, um, a lot of hotels will resort to using their own um, spice garden or uh, farm to table because it's the best. You know, they don't need to buy. It's organic and it's straight from the garden into the kitchen, prep and then serve. And guests would love that to see that, you know, and to see and knowing uh, that they're informed. And, you know, the waiters can say, um, sir, this garden salad is straight from, it's organic and it's straight from our garden on the rooftop or at the back in our farms. Okay because they'll know that it's fresh and it's served uh, organic and it's very healthy. The risk, uh, limited shelf life and if contaminated can result in serious illness or death. Okay, so very, very important when you're serving food like seafood, making sure that it has a shelf life, uh, making sure it's not contaminated. Remember, we talked about contamination in TS-109 and also in this course. Um, the technology, we talked about technology use, okay, it's very important too. Um, so software or Fidelio or Roommaster, whichever is being used is also very important. So labor intensive, but technology substitution is still possible. So like McDonald's, um, McDonald's now, if, if they don't have it in Suva yet, but um, they have kiosk machines in McDonald's overseas where you can, you don't need to go to the counter. You can go to the counter if you want to make specific orders, but you can um, line up in the kiosk machines, type in your uh, your selection and then pay for it uh, online like you use a card and then you just pick up your delivery Okay, so that's what it's talk what's what what is saying that technological substitution is still possible so McDonald's and fast food restaurants um, are very popular I've also I'm going to show you a video later uh, which is um, unique eats where people now in America some restaurants are resorting to where they can um, select their menu or select their products online, go down straight to the restaurant because it's paid online and just pick up their food. They don't need to even sit. Um, so it's not a drive-through, it's just takeaway and it's easier for them. Even if it's a medium to a high-end restaurant, they can still do that. Um, the presence of the customer, pressured by physical presence of customer. So late delivery, that's, that's really important. So it's important uh, when you have the customer we have a sit-down restaurant and you have late delivery so efficiency is very important part of managing quality right efficiency is very very important because the guest wants their food taken correctly order taken correctly the guest also wants to, it's very important that they have their food delivered on time it's very important because if it's an important celebration if you're having a group at dinner and the um you know they want the entree served at this time and they notified you that there will be some speeches, they want the main at this time and the dessert at this time, and they want to sing happy birthday to a uh, surprise birthday. You need, they need to coordinate with your staff or the major deal, the supervisor or the manager of the restaurant. And, it, and it's very important that everything is in a timely manner because time is quality for a lot of people they refer that to. Not just, not just the money, not just the price, okay? Um, this the, the quality management cycle. Please look through this. Uh, I'm not going to go through this because it's quite. Um, so it talks about uh, you know it talks about the customer um, consistency, like I talked about, um, and what what it, this is really important for your just so that you know the quality management cycle is also very important and related to the hospitality and tourism uh, business. And we'll have questions next week on this one on this class so you can download this and it's also in your textbook don't forget you have the e-textbook so you don't have any excuse all right for all of you you can download that off the internet um so approaches to quality management you have quality inspection all right when you go out to the market with your family or when you buy things you know you know when you look at carrots or or lemons or vegetables you inspect the quality before you buy them you just don't throw them in because you want to see is it fresh um, is it a day old All right and and uh, um, um, restaurant managers either do go who go and do buying from the market or chefs who go and do this they do the inspection quality inspection so finding defects in product or service 
before it reaches the customer by introducing an inspection. Now you might get farmers, all right, who come along and um, who, who want to uh, inspect, uh, who, who want to show you their goods or the eggs or the size of the eggs. So it's important that you uh, you inspect them. Focus in on identifying defects, okay, uh, bruises and uh, some some fruits and vegetable bruise. So you you got to be uh, very careful. Quality is a because you don't want to you know it's a way of preventing wastage, okay, spoilage, okay, within and especially with perishable items. Quality is a question of checking physical attributes against a checklist. Emphasis on putting things right, right. So very very important for perishable items, and also non-perishable and longer term items on a longer shelf life. Okay. So that would be for fruits and vegetables. And other, other ingredients or goods that are brought into the hotel are also inspected. Um, so let's, look, let's continue and look at um, uh, centers. This another point, which is centers on inspection by recognizing need for detailed inspection, for detailed specification. Checks should be made throughout the production process. And that's very true. Not just a raw ingredient, when it's also being the production is taking place, when it's being plated, so normally the executive chef or the sous chef or the supervisor checks the plate before it's taken out um, to the guests. Okay, when it's plated, and it's saying throughout the whole process. While even when it's taken out, uh, the waiter or the food server can ensure that the food is is um, that everything is the ingredients are there. Okay, there's nothing misplaced, etc. Like she go before she goes out and she finds out that. Um, there's no, um, what do you call this? There's no um, garnish. She'll have to go back in the kitchen to make sure that's garnished properly. She'll let the, let the chef know that there's no parsley or coriander that's, that's, on, that's not on the, on, the, on the drink or on the food, okay, on the dish. The approach is more likely to find errors and correct them earlier. So like I give an example. It will, it will only highlight when it has gone wrong, all right? So you need to, checking is also very important, uh, especially in the kitchen and restaurant. Focus has switched for the staff on to finding others to blame for the defects to avoid the disciplinary action taken. Whole focus on quality control is mistakes, all right? So try not to, uh, what they're trying to say here is that um, try not to play the blame game. Um, be accountable for and responsible for your own mistakes because that's only when you can learn and that happens in the, hospitality and tourism industry. Um, let's look at uh, what, what's happening here. You can see in the abattoir or in the coal section, um, it looks like fish and maybe one of the, sh the workers or the chefs is inspecting. Yeah, So that's inspection, inspecting the products and services before he purchases it. Okay. Next, we're looking at continuing quality assurance. We're looking at quality assurance, approaches to quality. So we, we've got inspection and we've got quality assurance. And let's look what quality assurance is talking to us about. So quality assurance looks at recognizing inefficiencies of waiting for mistakes to happen and strives to design quality into the process so that things cannot go wrong or they do, or if they do, they're identified and corrected. So I'm just going to hold your thought there. Just you hold your thought. And so many of you would have heard the the strategies in management or what you learn in hospitality, which is called the proactive and reactive. In hospitality, what this approach is trying quality assurance is guaranteeing when a quality assurance a plan is designed in every facet of the hotel industry like the different departments so each department like front office housekeeping food and beverage production restaurant bar um, you know even to smaller like act department like activities engineering making sure that they have a quality assurance plan a quality assurance plan is a is a designed uh, very thorough systematic plan that ensures that in it ensures that you know a system is put in place so what I'm trying to say is that you have the reactive approach and the proactive approach. So a reactive approach is that when an accident happens, or when something goes wrong, and then you take corrective action. We don't want that in the hospitality industry. What happens is we would like to have the quality assurance plan is designed to have 
to take a proactive approach. A proactive meaning that we put a system in place so that when a mistake happens, you you identify it and you correct it there and then. Or it's, it helps to identify it and it the problem doesn't occur because you've already recognized it. Okay? So don't forget that a proactive approach is a quality assurance plan. Um, it also talks about lasting continuous improvement through planning and preventing problems from arising at source. So what it does, a quality assurance plan, it also changes through time. So you make uh, imp you implement and you make changes and modifications over a period of time when you recognize problems and you find there's different causes or some like you know for for many of you if you you find out that like this current situa situation COVID-19 um, you find out that um, you know that you know that because of um, food prices have gone high excuse me <clears throat> Um, it's hard to, uh, you know, it'll take longer to get uh, importation where you ordered food from overseas because there's the because of the flight, um, you know, the flight uh, schedules and and no travels, uh, no travel to certain countries. You got to make uh, product substitution, and that's what you're doing in your pro in your project. You're doing product substitution uh, with your um, with your project instead of using. Um, a strawberries you probably use lemon or pineapple something that you can source locally right so those are the kind of measures that we 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 use um, in terms of quality assurance just give you an example uh, lastly we look at focus is not just on systems you remember i said putting a system in place but must involve the development of new operating philosophy and approach that is proactive remember i talked about proactive and involves new employees Right. So in quality assurance, just think of proactive. It's a system put in place so it guard against defects or when a problem occurs, you know what are the corrective actions or you can put a system in place so that the problem does not occur. And earlier, you remember I talked about McDonald's, okay, the kiosk machines. Right. So you, you input your, um, your order here and then you just wait for your order. All right. So it saves um, um, a lot of, you know, you don't get staffing requirements. You don't have too many staff, all right? And then you collect your, they call your number, they call, you know, they like when you go to McDonald's in uh, Lodala, you have the, the, the your, your number call. Either they call your number, it's on the computer screen above. Obviously, you can see that that's over C, yeah? Sorry, let me just put this. Okay, so let's look at furthermore. The, so we talked about in, uh, product inspection. We talked about total quality management, and then we'll talk, um, talk about quality. So now we're talking about total quality management. But prior to this, we looked at uh, quality assurance. So let's look at the, what is total quality management. You know, for many of you that don't know, TQM, total quality management, was founded in Japan. And that's why you see Japanese service is of, you know, they they thrive on efficiency and effectiveness. They thrive on time management. It's very, very important. You know, when you go to Japan, you should never be late for a meeting. It's actually an insult to them. All right. So it's very, very important for those of you that haven't traveled to Japan. That's one of the things that, that um, you know, the efficiency is very important to them. Okay. So that's what uh, quality is all about. Total quality management. So let's look at it. It focuses on customer scale of the business, nature of internal and external environment, and you know that because that's also very important. We brought that up in TS 108 and 109 when we're talking about the internal and external environment. These are factors okay, that contribute to the operation of your business. These are main differences between the quality assurance and total quality management approaches, right? because they recognize everything, so all the stakeholders become part and parcel of total quality management. So what is the total quality management approach? It's an approach driving force is the focus on the satisfaction of customer needs. So they focus on customer needs. Anything that could get in way of delivering the satisfaction must be removed. Okay, so that's what they thrive on customer satisfaction, driving on customer anticipation and anything that slows down or is a hindrance to the delivery of the service is removed. All right, so that's what they, they recognize. Um, 
It also places an emphasis on people in the organization, the people's roles and their roles is very important, broadening an outlook and skills uh, through encouragement of creativity, training and empowerment in measuring performance and finding ways to improve it. So empowerment is very important, especially when you're a manager. We will talk about in our tutorial this week, you'll talk about empowerment and how I gave you a case study and some questions also at the end of the tutorial. And we'll, we'll, you, we will discuss that in this week nine tutorial. Um, and it also talks about the emphasis of teamwork and participation. Basically what participation means in total quality management, in total quality management they sit in a, in a circle and management looks at um, ask their subordinates what are their um, what are their views and opinions and they take them into consideration that's what total quality so you listen to and support you listen to your um, your subordinates or your employees uh, views and opinions to improve the productivity to improve your performance to improve sales All right so let's look at that so you can see the consistency here this is a training program you're seeing they're putting files in between their legs so they, they it, it helps them with their posture and presentation. Okay. Um, so next week you got the Six Sigma. We get a tutorial based on this. All right. Approaches to quality management. This is another approach which is called Six Sigma. Okay. What it is is a set of management tools and approaches. A rigorous approach based on the collection of operating data that can improve process by reducing variability and eliminating defects. So a very rigorous means a very detailed approach where it collates all data in, in terms of performance, um, e evaluates it, all right? Um, and it, based on the principles of quality control, quality assurance, and total quality management to drive quality improvement. So they use all these approaches. So it's very uh, intense. So Six Sigma is a statistical measure. So it, uh, it considers statistical reports like a sales report, um, profit and margin statement, uh, um, profit and loss, uh, profit margin, recognized profit margin for each particular product. Um, it also sets out as a target, right, to establish a target and goal. Um, and it's also a management approach. Uh, quality management in practice. So the Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Awards. Please go online and, and research that, all right? Because that's really important. And um, we will talk about that in tutorials. Um, the Institute of Hospitality, Hospitalities or Hospitality Assured Scheme now widely used across the industry in the UK internationally to provide a framework for companies' own approach to quality management. So what is saying that they in the UK they have uh, um, um, a framework that they use and it's consistent it's adapted to different organizations but in terms of hospitality it's used to all different hotels hospitality and service providers so there's a consistency so it's like a guideline it's a proactive approach or a guideline um, and our second last slide looks at quality management in practice so they, this is just an example on the UK Quality Assurance Plan. It looks at the Institute of Hospitality's Assured Scheme. So we look at um, the first approach looks at customer research. Okay, so any any process that you do, you must have you must do research. You must do research. Then we look. Then you look at the customer promise. Okay, uh, finding out their needs and wants, how you provide them, which is also very important. How you'll deliver the the product then you do then you integrate it into business planning okay what part of that becomes the business planning the operational plan the marketing the financial plan human resources plan and other areas which is very important depending on the organization then we put that into operational planning like I talked about how the customer um, how that does how the the product moves through operational planning um, standards of performance, so consistency is very, very important, and you must recognize that there must be a benchmark, okay? Um, also looking at resources, resources also are very important. Uh, what are your resources that are required to carry out the service? Training and development of just not the external but internal 
um, service or internal um, employees is very important that delivers the service and then you finally de deliver the service to the guests all right so in the restaurant if there is a mistake or the guest is not happy then this is what we call service recovery all right so the guest is not happy i'm not happy with my meal da 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 da, da. you probably give them a free dessert or something service recovery is very very important because you're trying to maintain guest loyalty or guest retention so this cycle is very very important and lastly is service improvement how can i improve my service is it the food service the ambience is it the um, uh, the food itself the physical the plated service uh, does my staff need training does the food server need training all right and you need to make that that improvement you need to make that um uh, let me see you need to make that improvement you need to make the um uh, necessary adjustments or modifications and then you go back into customer research it's a cycle so this is it's it's something that's not just ongoing but it's something that's continuous all right service delivery is continuous and the pra practice of quality assurance because from time to time from decades to decades customer preferences change um, technology changes so in in um, you know keeping abreast with time and keeping abreast with latest technology and how things are done globally you need to move with time so but the human factor is very very important here when delivering quality service so don't forget that we talked about our last slide looks at the summary we talked about quality the different quality approaches why quality is important what's the definition of quality the experience of quality management in food and beverage and it's important approaches what are the advantages and disadvantages of these different approaches of quality um, you know go online and look at um, total quality management quality assurance all right these are very important quality circles some of you have done management so you would have had some idea what what this is because it's very important and you have to mention this in your i have some component of this you know, a section in your major project okay because it's very important because if you have a system in place uh, it's very very important you you can um which means that you have a benchmark you have quality standards in your organization organization or restaurant okay so that's very very important um so you know having said that um you know thank you you can download this i thank you for listening and taking up your time i will see you in tutorials um this is just a summary of your lecture please do further reading um in the chapter and um, you have questions ready for me i also for every week also i have um uh, let me see i call it a q and a session a q and a session is designed for any of you that can join in um and it's not compulsory but it'll be nice if you can you know if you want to ask questions or you're not sure you want to go over something that i said in lectures or in tutorials or you want to discuss something please join me in um, in those um, q and a sessions okay uh, all the best for this week please take care and stay safe with your families uh, make sure you wash your hands remember we're in food and beverage and it's important that um, you practice sanitation and hygiene okay so this is quite an interesting topic your you have a textbook so you have no excuse you can go into the Moodle, download your text. We should have done that in week one and read on the chapter to reinforce your learning. Okay. Um, so thank you for your time and uh, have a great week.